this is just such an incredible time in the market where there's so many candidates uh, that can kind of like pick and choose what they want to do right now. I mean, the best thing you can do is just, you know, understand what your best skill sets are and put yourself out there. You know, you want to understand the business model behind that company, even if it sounds like it's a really cool idea, you know, what is really going to be the market for that? You know, a cool idea doesn't necessarily equal there's a market for it. Have a, have a good story. Understand what your best skill set is that you bring to the table that no one else could at this particular time. I'm a matchmaker. My job is to find a good person uh, understand understand their skill set and then find a great company and understand what they need and put those two together. Hi all, good morning. So today I have Miranda with us and we might have special appearances from her dogs, Nutmeg and Pepper, who are absolutely adorable. Let's welcome Miranda on 10 Minutes of Hiring Wisdom, who is a seasoned executive and a technical recruiter with an engineering background. She takes pride in building the strongest teams in the Valley, which is growing like crazy. She understands the raw talent and skills are always required, but today's job market is much more about who you know and is passion and she's very passionate about the people's business. She understands how connections can take make you go a long way. So let's welcome Marinda on 10 Minutes of Hiring Wisdom, where she will tell us about what she's learned along the way and some of the amazing startups that she's currently working with. Hi, Marinda. How are you doing today? Hi there. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Of course. So, Marinda, you're working for a number of startups. Can you tell us about some of the, those startups, what, what your position is within the company and what your role is? Sure. So, uh, you know, I really try to help uh, smaller stage or smaller size startups that have hiring pushes where maybe you don't need a full-time recruiter, you know, year round, but you definitely have a hiring push to get through, you know, the first or second quarter uh, of the business. So, uh, you know, for example, I've worked with a really great company just recently, Ganaz, uh, G-A-N-A-Z. They're an agricultural tech play where they are helping farms, which, you know, on the Western side of the U.S., you know, we have, you know, kind of call us part of the breadbasket of the U.S. where we are, you know, definitely supplying a lot of the food chain in terms of especially fresh produce, uh, vegetables and fruits. So we the the Ghana's platform is built to basically support farms that are bringing on employees. It's an HR platform, really more than not, uh, to help those farm industries really kind of streamline and digitize that hiring process. A lot of that has been happening kind of by hand, by paper, offline. You know, you have a lot of migrant workers, you have a lot of maybe even undocumented workers. So they're very sensitive to that as well. And so I help them bring on, uh, help to like identify candidates that would be great for that industry. Um, it's really helpful to be bilingual in that, in that instance. So, you know, that's just one example of a type of tech that is affecting industries that are not necessarily super technical. You know, I've gone into the electric vehicle space. I've gone into the semiconductor space, like very traditional tech. Um, I've gone into helping with uh, digital publishing platforms, digital marketing, helping companies really push themselves from offline sales to really online sales. So, I mean, this is just such an incredible time in the market where there's so many candidates uh, that can kind of like pick and choose what they want to do right now. I mean, the best thing you can do is just, you know, understand what your best skill sets are and put yourself out there. Okay, I love that. I think a follow-up question for that, Miranda, would be a lot of companies usually when they might have a hiring need and everything, some companies, like for example, in the pandemic went crazy, it hired a lot of people. But for instance, Better.com hired so many people during the pandemic and then laid off a lot of people on Zoom. So how do smaller companies make sure that they hire the right amount of people that they can retain over a long time? Yeah, and you, yeah, you definitely don't want to get caught in that mix where yeah, a company kind of overextends itself in terms of like what they think they can do versus what, you know, their finances 
actually say they can do. So, you know, some of it is on the candidate. You know, you are interviewing that company just as much as they are interviewing you. You want to know what their funding situation is, you know, or are they profitable? You know, what is, you know, you want to understand the business model behind that company, even if it sounds like it's a really cool idea, you know, what is really going to be the market for that? You know, a cool idea doesn't necessarily equal there's a market for it, you know, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the reality of it. And so a candidate has to still take it upon themselves to, you know, do their due diligence in terms of <laughs> yeah. where that market that is, is where that company sits within that market. And don't be afraid to ask if, if a company can't answer you in terms of, you know, how are we funded? Are we profitable or not? Or, you know, what's our, what's our game plan? Are you seeking to do an IPO maybe, or are you seeking an acquisition? Like what's your long-term play versus even just short-term uh, you know, any company that is really worth its salt will tell you that straight up. Uh, any company that has kind of like some, you know, kind of fudging around the, those answers, you know, yeah. that that's the bigger risk. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing that, Miranda. I think another question for that would be, you mentioned that you work with a lot of small startups. How do you come across these companies? Because people usually go for the bigger brands like Facebook, like, um, for example, YouTube, companies like that, where which everyone knows about. But I think the experience of working with smaller scale, fast growing startups is something so amazing. But I'm curious, how do you start, find these companies and how do you like get your posi- foot in with them? You know what? I mean, I think they're all around you. And if you just like, you know, kind of pay attention to your news feeds and companies that are doing, you know, certain things within their own specific markets, you know, I get a lot of my kind of market research done through just like news articles about, you know, this startup is doing something interesting in the climate change space. Um, And then I will go and start to look on, you know, LinkedIn is a great resource. Um, But even just Google, Googling things, like sometimes I'll just even put in a company competitors. And then that will lead me to a whole slew of other companies that are out there in that space. And yeah, like in, 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 if you just start talking to companies, you'll start to kind of flow into that market a little bit better. That's very true. I think all of us tend to romanticize the big brands that we often tend to overlook the smaller brands that might be making a difference, which is a problem that all of us need to like figure out and sort out. So thank you so much for uh, sharing that, Miranda. Last question, Miranda, because you've been in this space for such a while, you've been working with a lot of um, companies. What is one key advice that you might have for job seekers out there who are currently struggling to find a job? So I would definitely tell any job seeker to be confident, know that there is a place for you in this market. I think sometimes your attitude towards even your job search and how you're going about it can kind of start to affect you know, your effectiveness or your efficiency with it. So know that there is plenty of room for you in this market know that there are great companies out there and understand have a have a good story understand what your best skill set is that you bring to the table that no one else could at this particular time if you can articulate what you bring to the table and it doesn't matter what school you went to or didn't go to school it doesn't matter sometimes even if you already have the experience that that job requires but if you have done your good research done your homework and you're willing to put in the time to make it happen know that there's a company out there that is willing to give you a shot so just trust that you can bring your your best self to the table and know that there's a company out there that would be willing to take you on now, let me ask you that question, Miranda. What can you bring to the table that no one else can? And we'll end up with that note. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, for me, I bring a sense of good people relationships, of good relationship building, and then that leads to making good matches. So I make, I'm a matchmaker. 
My job is to find a good person, uh, understand understand their skill set, and then find a great company and understand what they need and put those two together. And I am probably better than most search engines or, you know, job boards in terms of really understanding kind of the full three-dimensional dynamic of what makes for a good employee and a good employer, and then put those two together. Well, I mean, Miranda, you could even start your own dating business, considering you tend to have this great observation about how people work and how they're... You know, it's actually funny you mentioned that. I actually do have... uh, I've had some side... um, Really? (laughs) Side experience in working in the matchmaking in terms of dating. Oh, wow. Um, We'll definitely speak more about that offline, Miranda. We'd love to know that. But thank you so much, Miranda. It was absolutely a pleasure learning about you, how you work with different startups, how you come across them and you what you bring to the table the way you articulated that i can definitely see why a lot of companies would prefer working with you it was an absolute pleasure thank you so much thank you so much for having me thank you